Live from Orlando, Florida, extracting the signal from the noise, it's theCUBE, covering Enterprise Connect 2016. Brought to you by Oracle ZDLRA, Vonage, and Cafe X. Now your hosts, John Furrier and Jim Burton. Hello everyone, I'm John Furrier with SiliconANGLE, theCUBE. We are on the ground at Enterprise Connect's special presentation uh, here with the unified communication markets. We're out disrupting the cloud. The cloud is changing the game. We're here with Sajil Hussain, who is the CMO of Cafe X. Welcome to theCUBE. Thank you. Thank you. Um, we're on the ground. So obviously your CEO is just talking about some of the big picture um, trends, but Chime is the big story here. Why is this so groundbreaking? What is Chime? Chime is an amazingly beautifully intuitive app that changes the way people collaborate uh, with each other. 70%, uh, 70% 70 of Fortune 1000 companies have a, bro uh, have, have a browser of choice, things like Internet Explorer or uh, maybe even Safari. So when you've standardized on a browser like IE, you don't want to be asking companies to be changing their browsers or having to download special plugins and downloads just to make conferencing work. What Chime does is it fixes the problem with that we've had with WebRTC where it doesn't work on some browsers but it works on some, some of the others. It fixes all of those and makes it amazingly simple for IT organizations to deploy pervasive conferencing to every endpoint. That's what I mean, that is a big headache right now. I mean, I think everyone who's watching has probably joined a go-to-meeting or a conference or link or whatever you're using, and you got a new browser, Chrome, or whatever you're using, exactly. and you got to download something. Exactly. What a pain in the ass that is. And it's the, and then that, and that, so that's a headache. So you give them the aspirin. So there's an aspirin effect there for the user. What else do you guys do? Because WebRTC was trending heavily yesterday on Twitter. A lot of activity. What is that? role now with WebRTC in the new format because you give them the aspirin, you take away the pain with, yeah. with the browser. What else do you guys do? What's the, what's the big breakthrough tech? So, so here's the thing, right? There was always that but with WebRTC. WebRTC can do this, but here's the problem. So we've taken care of that, like you said, right? With the browsers going away. Beyond that, what we do is we make it extremely simple for IT to deploy this. And what I mean by that is there is nothing in the DMZ. There is absolutely nothing that goes into the DMZ. So firewall traversal is a breeze. And then beyond that, the way we... Previously it was a headache because you had all kinds of configuration management exactly. issues, security compliance, all that all stuff goes that away. Stuff. All of that goes away because there's nothing in the DMZ from our perspective. And then towards the end of the day, the MCU utilization, the network resources that are being utilized, we have anyway up to 70, 75% of savings in terms of the way we utilize the MCU ports, right? So not only are we giving TCO savings uh, to enterprises. We are removing the complexity because there's nothing in the DMZ. At the same time, we're making it extremely simple for employees or consumers, partners mm. outside the enterprise to come in on a video conference without the oh shit moment that this doesn't work. So, so I, I'm going to push back on you and say, oh my God, there's nothing in the DMZ. I'm scared. My first reaction is security problem. We've, How do you address that? We've, we've taken care of uh, security because everything from a signaling perspective, everything from a media perspective is secure, it's reliable, and it taps into the existing resources so that you don't have to rip and replace anything and everything that you have, whether it's Skype for Business, whether it's the existing telepresence systems, all of that works. So your, your success to date and your traction is, is significant around ease of use and simplicity. Standing stuff up, making it work, and now you're giving some details under the hood on some of the technical things you guys done. Absolutely. So that's awesome. Um, so I got to ask the question, is that if that's the case, then how do you get the engagement up? Because at the end of the day, speeds and feeds is, is not so much the fashionable thing anymore. It's like, what's the outcome? That's the big buzzword. What's my business outcome? So at the end of the day, it's engagement. How do you guys address the engagement issue? The, uh, it's interesting. We, we just launched our new branding uh, mm -hmm. coming into the conference. Making together happen is our t tagline, right? So talking about engagement, Engagement shouldn't have any boundaries, whether it's within the company, whether it's outside, transcending all boundaries. And, and so that's the idea with Chime. We make engagement happen, and it needs to be a click away. And so there's the aspect of making it easy, but at the same time, we want to make it uh, extremely um, business-wise lucrative to the enterprises so that they can deploy these experiences, pervasive experiences, utilize what they have, and have a business case that makes sense. 
So you know, one of the trends that we've been riding on at Silicon Angle and the Cube and, and taking advantage of and covering deeply yeah. is this notion of social, social business. Mm -hmm. And it reminds me of the web back in the 90s where you know e-business was a big discussion and no one talks about e-commerce anymore, it's just commerce. It just happens now, it's yeah. all on the internet. Yeah. Same thing with social media, it was kind of a fad, kind of promotional, but now you're seeing social reality, and engagement yeah. being a big part of that. And so I got to ask you the question, which by the way, great, great marketing on your end to have that uh, positioning, but at the end of the day, engagement's about the data. How do you guys help capture that data? Because at the end of the day, big data analytics is providing insights. That's the future, that's what people want to know. Yeah. Okay, I buy the engagement, you got me there. Yeah. Where's the data, how do I show ROI? So we've been down this path ever since we started the company. Uh, one of the products that we have is a context bus, a context engine that captures everything that a user is doing. Every button they've pushed, what have they been looking so you're at logging everything. that. So we're logging everything, we're capturing everything, and all of this data can be leveraged from a big data perspective, from an analytics perspective, to know exactly how that engagement is going. Why is it that you know 30% of my support calls are happening from this particular page, yeah. right? So that is amazing amount of data, and all of this is on a digital channel where we know digital is huge. Go digital or die is, is what the saying is. So we come from that heritage of analytics, data that can drive your business is key, and we're going to infuse all of this in every product that we do, whether it's Shine, whether it's anything else, right? So you guys are innovating on the technology side. I got to ask you about the brand identity and engagement, but also take that with a customer example. Give an example of how you guys are making engagement happen, because digital transformation and digital assets is about the data, yeah. it's about the engagement, it's about the interactions, it's about being social yeah. and having value. The, the ton of examples that come to mind, I mean, they're global, very large scale uh, companies. You heard Brian Barnes from Amex talk uh, last year about how they've changed the way they do business in terms of digital engagement, how they service their premium card holders for support questions. So now you could literally, as a premium member, download an app, uh, Amex's app, and with a touch of a button, get connected to the right agent and have question solved over video so that it's a much more meaningful engagement, right? That's one example. The way legal, the way courtrooms do business today where you have inmates um, having conversations and uh, you know real-time sessions with, with their counselors, with their attorneys, mm -hmm. right? We've changed the way telemedicine, is, for example, works in terms of digital engagement. Uh, same thing with uh, employee and workforce collaboration where hard ROI is what they're looking for in terms of driving revenues, in terms of increasing customer satisfaction. NPS is a, is a key metric that we measure mm -hmm. and we help companies drive. Uh, so these are all different examples and, and you know, we believe that we are absolutely scratching the surface. The, 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 the best part is yet to come. You guys have a relationship with Intel, you guys are doing great. You're not a massive company, but you're growing fast. What would you share with the audience about things they should know about Cafe X that might not have known about Cafe X? And why are you guys winning and why are you guys doing so well? Cafe X, literally, like I said, we are scratching the surface. There's not been much innovation that's happened on the collaboration side, on the video conferencing side of it. We are disrupting. Uh, think about Cafe X as disrupting the, the traditional norms. We're not afraid, we're bold about it. Um, watch out for us driving real use cases, real business outcomes for enterprises. Uh, our relationship with Intel is amazing. It gives us not just a go-to-market angle, but also a deep collaboration angle in terms of all these WebRTC spaces as well as real-time engagement capabilities that we together can bring on their chipsets. And um, the future looks exciting for us. And I was talking with Jim Burton at uh, Unified Communications, soon to be called Biz BC Commun Business Communications, BC uh, Communications. Um, and he and I have been talking, and he believes like this has got to it's it's moving to a new world. And you know he's always been kind of you know pounding his fist on the table, saying this is going to transform very fast. And that's happening now. So I got to ask you the question um, that I asked Jim. We ask everybody: this old school and new school. You're either going to be on one side of the street or the other. What is that line? What is new school? What is old school? Because unified communications used to be siloed stacks and people would have group chat apps, they'd have video apps, and they'd have you know siloed software. Yeah, but yeah. with cloud, that is changing everything. What is the new school for unified communications? The new school of unified communications starts with, uh, with the, uh, the tenet, the basic tenet that older systems will still be there. That's the ground reality of things. But you've got to have a way in which you can deliver seamless experiences with the consumer or the employee in the middle of that experience, right? So we believe that there has to be a bridge between some of the older systems 
uh, and some of the new innovations we bring uh, to the table. So that, that's one, that there has to be a bridge. And then the second thing is we have to look at a much more unified way of delivering these experiences. Digital is gonna be key, cloud is gonna be key, analytics is gonna be key, and it's, it's all of these aspects that we bring to the table with Chime and some of the other innovations we've announced at this show. So who's your target audience inside an enterprise? What does that person look like? What's that persona? Is it uh, an architect? Is it an IT guy? Is it a business owner? All of the above. Who is your specific target? Who, who should care about Cafe X inside a, a business? If you're a CIO, head of IT, you need to be looking at Chime. No ifs and buts. Chime can bring you a lot of value and you need to be looking at it. If you have a lot of telepresence systems, if you have a lot of in-room systems, if you have a lot of siloed architectures from a video perspective, Chime is something that you're going to look at. If you're the chief digital officer or chief customer experience officer, you need to be looking at some of the functions that we have, some of the capabilities we have with Live Assist applications like Live Assist, because we can change the way you transform, the, change the way you engage with your customers, whether it's online, whether it's through your mobile app. So obviously this online real-time you know, support, whether it's agents, supervisors, you guys have some things, is the cutting edge. That's where live chat seems to work. It's mostly from a web page perspective. Right. But a couple things are happening. One, web page is becoming much more dynamic, not static. They're alive, they've got APIs, and a confluence of tech coming in. This is a big area right now because this is where the human communication can go digital. What are the big trends in that area and what are you guys doing to make, make that successful? What, we, what we're seeing is that from a digital engagement perspective that 90% uh, of consumers would rather use a mobile app to engage with enterprises, with brands, as opposed to using the traditional phone. The whole 1-800 number is uh, is going to be, uh, you know, we believe that mobile and web is going to be the face of one's business. It's kind of like email. It's going gonna, it's gonna to die a slow death. Exactly. <laughs> be around for a while. <laughs> that's what's going to happen. Right? That is, that's exactly what's going to happen, right? And so My son doesn't even use email anymore, they only 10 zillion accounts, they don't even do their voicemail. Exactly, so we, we believe that giving the flexibility to consumers to use their channels of choice, whether it is chat, whether it's voice, whether it's video, is paramount. And that needs to be done in the most seamless manner within a mobile app or a web page, right? We, we, so our, our philosophy starts with that. And then how do we make it extremely simple for them to not only engage with the enterprise, but leverage the assets that are there within the enterprise mm -hmm. so that you can provide that seamless, not the islands that we're talking about, but a seamless experience across in a unified manner. You know, I asked Mark Hurd at Oracle and during my interview and I, well as all the senior executives in the industry, because it's a really big thing for companies, well, not necessarily your company, but you know, your customers, uh, this generational technology uh, mm -hmm. affinity. You talk to a millennial, anyone under a millennial, it's like they have no regard for what, 800 number, exactly. email, phone books, all this stuff is like, that's dead to them. They yeah. want instant on, but then the people in these legacy environments aren't millennials. So there's generational issues from the buying and deploying and evaluation standpoint, also from their customer, which is either employees and their customers. Exactly. Talk about that and how important that is, and what is the key success factor in breaking down that generational divide between different constituencies and enterprises? What we've seen in the enterprise is that, to your point, you have legacy systems. That's the ground reality. You have legacy systems in the place. They're not going away. If I've invested in in-room systems or video conferencing systems, they're going to stay for a bit. Um, but at the same time, employees, the new employees that are coming in, the millennials, or even the external customers, partners outside the firewalls, they're going to use things of their choice, things that are easy that they gravitate to. So there has to be a bridge that you have to make it that simple. You can't spend 10 minutes trying to get into a conference room frustrated and you're wasting all this valuable time. So this is where we've made it simple from not just uh, an experience perspective, getting into those conference rooms while providing the savings. It all has to come together. The bottom line, they won't work there. I mean, if they want to work in an environment they're comfortable in, yeah. and they just won't, well, they'll quit or they'll go they'll somewhere quit else. Or go to somewhere <laughs> else. So investing in technology, the right so forms of technology that allow digital experiences to be driven at the at the experience, um, not compromising the experience that uh, these millennials, for example, would have is paramount, right? Yeah. So talk about the event here. You guys got a big push. Share with the audience what you guys are doing Cafe X here at the event. Big push. What's the messaging? What are you guys promoting? And what's the big plan? Well, if you're at uh, Enterprise Connect, EC16, uh, you're going to see Cafe X making together happen, which is our big brand splash. We've had a number of different releases that went out. We had two or three different press releases that were launched. We have a 30 by 20 booth over here, come down to Cafe X. 
the booth, you're going to see demos, you're going to engage with experts, you're going to go get down into the how, the what, and the why. And people who aren't here can't go to the booth, where do they go? They go to cafex.com and you can see all our videos about each of the products that we've launched, as well as some of the press releases and case studies. So I would encourage you to either go to cafex.com or follow us on Twitter, cafexcoms is our Twitter handle. Okay, I got to know, how did you get cafex.com URL? It's a damn good URL. Well, that, that was some magic behind <laughs> behind the scenes, but we did, right? Uh, it's so hard to get a good URL. Four <laughs> letters, you know, I mean, want to know. Okay, well, congratulations, Thanks. Cafe X here uh, and on the ground. This is theCUBE. Thanks for watching.